Some say sex is not the answer. They're right. It's not the answer. It's the question. The answer is yes. I have a confession. That provocative paragraph is called an attention getter. In this case, it may also be called a deception. My topic is not about sexual exploits. Apologies to my Epicurean friends. Although what I have to say is not as salacious, it is certainly as important. Here it is. I'm a big proponent of saying yes, especially when visiting a foreign land, a domain that may be across the street, across a railroad track, or across an ocean wide. In fact, I've made a habit of saying yes every time I get the chance. Recently, my friend Karan invited me to attend an East Indian baby shower across the street and a few houses down. I said, yes. I was delighted to join the celebration. The women were elegantly dressed in vibrant saris. The men's beards were trimmed to perfection. Although I could not quite nail the ingredients of most of the dishes, they were all exotically delicious. The laughing and hugging were exuberant, all in a spirit of peace and happiness. They clearly were at home. When I left, I felt as though all the atoms in my body were vibrating out of sheer joy. What an honor to watch, listen, and absorb the intriguing dimensions of another culture, to see their kindness, their graciousness, their humanity. There is only one thing better than watching, and that one thing is doing. I was once asked to sing a solo at the Morning Star Baptist Church in East Pasco, Washington, literally on the other side of the tracks. Without hesitation, I said, yes, count me in. Although I was the only white person in the sanctuary, I was welcomed as if I were a long lost member of the family. When I was introduced and stepped onto the stage, I was greeted with, Amen, glory, hallelujah. The wave of love so surprised me, I said, but I haven't done anything yet. The congregation smiled knowingly, which said to me, that's the way it's done here, brother. I nodded at the pianist who gave me a driving four-measure introduction to Amazing Grace. I sang with my heart pounding like a drum. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. The choir startled me. After singing the first two words, Amazing Grace, the choir repeated the phrase in double time. Amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It was so soulful, so in the groove, my feet were tingling. I took a little hop before I knew what had hit me. Amen, son, an elderly believer shouted. Sing the song, another said, his smile as glorious as sunrise. For one shining moment, I thought the sky might part and transport me in a chariot of fire to heaven's gate. It was an evening of rejoicing, celebration, and renewal. I could feel my eyes welling with tears, so grateful that I had said yes. Leap forward 20 years. 
My wife Nita and I were living in Carnon, France, a blue water haven on the Mediterranean for sailors who anchor in the marina and tourists who stroll along the beach. My French friends Henri and Marie-France invited me to visit the Daiquerie Café for a night of jazz. Although the French pronunciation of Daiquerie may sound strange, I'm sure you know the English translation. Daiquiri. The Daiquiri Café. Naturally, I said, oui, avec grand plaisir. Yes, with great pleasure. When we arrived, Henri introduced me to the leader of the Mr. Ralph Blues Band. Mr. Ralph and I immediately hit it off. We babbled in French about legendary blues performers from Muddy Waters to Janis Joplin. You seem to know the blues, Mr. Ralph said in French. Eh bien, je ne suis pas Ray Charles, I said. Mais je peux quand même chanter un peu. Translation, well, I'm not Ray Charles, but I can still sing a little. Will you sing tonight? Mr. Ralph asked. Sing with a blues band in the south of France? I could feel my gut percolating. Of course, I said, I'd love to. The video you're about to see was captured on a cell phone by Mr. Ralph's wife. Before starting, I turned to the drummer and set the tempo. Then, before pivoting to face the audience, I had an idea. I did the first button of my shirt and popped my collar. That simple move set the tone. Now, Imagine yourself in the cool shade of the Daiquiri Cafe after a lazy day in the sun. Ready? Here we go. You know, they call it Stormy Monday. And Tuesday's just as bad. Now 
listen to me now. you're thinking my performance was a bit over the top. That's not true. It was not over the top. It was, o <laughs> it was over the moon. Frankly, I'm a little embarrassed watching myself pull out all the stops. But here's my take. When I say yes, I own it, heart and soul. I want to savor the taste of cinnamon and garlic and red chili powder. I want to get on board and take a ride on the gospel train. And I want to swing my hips and snap my fingers and sing my heart out to a hot blues band on the French Mediterranean. Why do anything half-baked? Why not take a chance? Abandon the self-doubts, embrace the possibilities, and live life as if there were no tomorrows. Because one day, my friend, our tomorrows will vanish like a wisp of smoke. So, straighten your back, fasten your seat belts, and be quick to accept the next invitation to adventure, illumination, and belonging. And that's why you should always say yes. Oh, and if the adventure leads to romance, uh, within the limits of decency, mind you, have at it. Without sex, a tender encounter is enchanting. With sex, it's even better. <laughs> 